ask questions. This one's listed as first. Um, you guys tell me where you think it's important to ask questions. You can write down. Gives you an idea. Yeah, thank you. Related to service or installs? Service. Service, so service. Uh, I'm a service expert and uh, from the service arena, and I'm glad to be here with you guys. Uh, my name's Bert, and uh, appreciate the uh, overlap in the service. Uh, we want to help you guys have uh, different areas of growth, um, and also it helps out service, and then you guys get to hang out with our dudes a little bit, and, um, so I appreciate it. But um, it does open up the door for callbacks and just details that you're not used to thinking about any this. So ask questions starts when you get dispatched a call. You look at all the notes in that call. Uh, there might be random details. Um, you guys are used to doing that on the install side. Same thing with the service. Then uh, the questions go into asking the uh, past. Uh, what, what relevant truth is, is there to find in the past? So you go into the property background and you read our history at this call and um, sometimes there's some huge pointers there or things that help you be prepared uh, for the customer and then ask questions leads into having that conversation with whoever your customer is it could be a property manager or a homeowner um, as you're starting the project or the maintenance or whatever it is um, as makes sense you the more communication you have with the customer, their expectations, what's going on here, uh, what's the story, where is everything at. As you ask those questions, more comes out, the whole picture, and it, it helps for things to not get missed. Again, this is also, a lot of these things are going to be very directly applicable to install. You guys have learned to avoid frustrations and callbacks in the same way. Our number one callback in service is a clogged drain. So we have just decided that we're going to quote it or clean it every single time. And so if it doesn't make sense to quote it, like for instance you're doing an evaporator coil, throwing your drain cleaning on the end of there is kind of odd. It's already there for a long time. You got a big price ticket. Then you just clean the drain. So every repair, compressor, evaporator coil, if we're sent out for a quoted repair and we're there for any significant amount of time, we just clean the drain. Hook up the vacuum, run some water through. We don't have to be scraping out the pan unless for some reason the pan was really bad. This is just like callback prevention, cleaning the drain. And so um, the other situation would be maybe you're there for a service call and it's a capacitor, uh, we quote the drain. And this is every single time, whether we think we need it or not. So we're either cleaning it or quoting it. They have a maintenance contract. We're not quoting the drain. We're just cleaning it. We're out there for a capacitor. They have a maintenance contract. It should be getting clean. We don't care. We're just going to clean it while we're here. That extra five, ten minutes saves us rolling a truck and a frustrated customer. Um, so it's huge. So quote or clean the drains every time that we roll up to a service call. Um, number three is removing all panels. This is the uh, memorized tagline for checking everything on the system. And then removing all panels is just a disciplined thing. Um, again, capacitor example. It's easy to find a problem outside, fix it, and then see everything running good and not touch our air handler. But the discipline of removing all the panels shows you things that might have been a surprise, something really gross, something yucky, something bad about to happen in the system, you can catch it um, by just looking at everything. Part of removing panels is that little filter panel. You check the filter, always check the basic stuff. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've replaced a compressor and found a horrible filter in the system, which may have been responsible for the last compressor's death. Um, so even on a quoted repair, you're checking things as simple as a filter. Um, is my evaporator slam clogged? Maybe that's why we had to replace the TXV in the first place. It froze, which can uh, cause a, a TXV to get locked down sometimes. And so um, that remove all panels just stands for checking every detail 
on our system. And then um, enter the readings, um, which also implies that you're taking all the readings, right? So there's a callback prevention there. Part of the entering the readings callback prevention is also when the customer does call back, um, it helps the conversation to have proof that, yeah, we did test things, that, yes, your capacitor was checked. I realized they came out last night and they replaced your capacitor. Um, those things just go sometimes. That's just how capacitors are. But I do see here in the maintenance one month ago that he has the capacitor readings in this call. We checked it. And um, it just helps the conversation to show we are doing our job. Touch everything, final walkthrough. Um, this is the most important part of any project to prevent callbacks specifically. So the most important part to prevent callbacks is this final walkthrough. And our tagline is touch everything. And it's just a, a way of, don't you can't get away from um, actually walking up to the system in your final walkthrough. Touching the unit, I can feel the blower, you can hear the hum. This gives me time to remember that I left the cap off, whatever it is. So just that physical act, walking up to it, touching it. So many times, come out to the condenser, put my hand on it, and I realize, oh, the caps are off. It also gives you time to check if the drain is draining. Um, so the touch everything, um, the strict rule for our service team, and anyone who's going to be running service is once you, this is a big thing you do only after you're done. So everything's done, you're ready to leave. Then it's usually, hey, I'm just going to do a walk here, make sure I didn't forget any of my tools. So it has to be in addition to your job that you're getting paid to do, you're doing this extra thing that's unnecessary. And I think that's where a lot of callbacks can be re prevented when you switch your mindset from, I do what's necessary, <coughs> this extra step is unnecessary. And it does, it is an unnecessary step 90% of the time, right? 90% of the time, you don't catch anything. There's no reason for you to have spent that extra three minutes. But it's that 10% that is costing our company um, and is frustrating customers and we're trying to do that. And so it's well worth that final walkthrough. And when we accept in our minds that this thing, this thing is an extra thing, uh, but I'm totally going to do it as part of my process from now on. Um, I think then we then we're realizing I think it's important and, and we're ready to catch callbacks. So those principles are across the board. These are just the five that um, in service is something you can memorize and use every time, and the general truth that keeps us on the straight and narrow. And we noticed a huge decline in callbacks everyone would buy into this. Um, you mentioned this, right? Yeah. Yeah. That quickly. Which is fantastic. Um, I spent so much effort laminating these and handing them out to you guys. Um, most of my heart and soul went into reading this um, and even giving a little bit of input to what Britain put together here for you guys. If you did this, there wouldn't be a callback ever in your entire life. Ever. Ever. I'm willing to stake my entire career on that. Um, so it is something that's not that um, big, and it's super helpful. It only takes a few minutes to skim through at the end of your call. Um, and we, these were built in response to our callbacks. As callbacks would come in, we would collect the most common and then we built this, so it's specifically a callback prevention checklist. It should be labeled callback prevention, not actually install checklist, because that is a lot more extensive, a lot more extreme. Uh, but in the install side, there's so many details to the project that could create a callback. But you do have the benefit of a very similar process every single day and you can nail down those details. Whereas on the service side, every customer and call and, and problem can be very different 
you can be on a totally different wavelength from the call that you were on last time. Um, and so the callback prevention is a more general truth with specific guidelines. So, thanks for watching. If you're willing, give this video a thumbs up and drop us a comment. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay updated with all of our future videos. And as a quick reminder, HVAC School isn't just a YouTube channel. Dive deeper with us at our main website, hvacrschool.com. Curious for more knowledge on the go? We've got you covered. Tune into the HVAC School podcast, available on all your favorite podcast apps. And while you're at it, join our thriving Facebook group. Also, don't miss out on our free mobile applications available for both iPhone and Android. We're all about community. Vortex by Tex.